didn't move to the invisible arm. Oh, welcome back, Hex. Uh, what happened to Barjo? Uh, I think he's just cleaning up the Ask Good Game desk, but let's get on with this review. Affirmative. The Steam download Creviers is a puzzle platformer set in a magical forest, lit with a bioluminescence that gives it a feel of something out of Avatar. But the light in the forest is dying. You'll be controlling a set of five mythical creatures who are trying to make their way through the forest to collect light to bring it back to life. There are five stages in the game, and each stage has three levels. A new Creer Viewer is introduced in each stage, each equipped with its own set of special abilities, which you'll be using to collect balls of light and help one another through the forest. Mm. Your first Creer Viewer, Bitey, can munch onto objects to help make his way across chasms, and he has a long tail that other Creer Viewers can use as a rope to swing on when the gap is too wide. And these are the sorts of cooperative actions that you'll need to use to help get both Creer Viewers through the level. Other creepiers like Zappy can create electrical sparks to charge light mushrooms to light the way. Others have spikes that can be shot or used as a climbing tool to scale walls and trees with. Some can break through stone and one can glide. <laughs> Nearly all the creepiers have offensive abilities too, which you'll need to use to scare off beasties that are trying to hamper your progress. It's all about trying to clear the way for your companion or, or create a path so that you can both get through. I thought the creepiers themselves were interesting and very well animated. I thought so too, Darren. I like how they all had their own unique personalities and characteristics, and when you both arrived at a checkpoint, they'd do a little dance. It's really cute. We played this game on noob difficulty. You mean normal difficulty? No, Hex, I don't. There are three difficulty settings, the lowest being normal, and I'm afraid it was far too easy. The developers must have mistaken their players for noobs. The game isn't very long, so if you don't choose one of the harder difficulty settings, the whole thing will be over far too quickly. I agree, Darren. It was a bit too easy. And not only that, but the first few levels were quite simple and repetitive. New creepiers and game mechanics were introduced really slowly, and that meant that all the fun stuff was at the end. It wasn't really until the third stage that I started to feel challenged in any way, and things started to get a little bit more interesting. Also, later in the game, you've obtained more Creviers to switch between, so you're thinking about which of their abilities you'll be able to utilise to navigate the forest terrain. This was fun and engaging, but it took too long to get to that point, Hex. Yeah, I mean, if the game was longer, I guess you could forgive the slower start, but here it felt like it was over just as it started to get good. It's not an expensive game by any means, but I would have been happy to pay a little bit more money just for more game. That said, it is worth playing because although the concept is fairly simple at the start, the game environment is just beautiful and with each new character you feel compelled to finish it. I thought the music complemented the art and design of the game just perfectly. It was soft and magical and it was perfect for exploring the forest and chasing those harder to reach balls of light. Also, the previous colouring would change in each level to reflect the changing environment around you which was a nice touch. Mm, I thought so too. I did notice a few level design issues here and there, like a tree in the foreground obscuring your vision, for example, but for the most part, it's a fairly smooth experience. I thought it was great that while you could only ever have two creepiers on your screen at once, you could switch between any of the five at checkpoints once you'd obtained them. Which was your favourite creepier, Darren? While I admire Zappy's ability to manipulate electricity, I think my favourite was Rolly. I like the way she curled into a little ball, not unlike Sonic the Hedgehog, to bowl her way through the underground tunnels. What about you, Hex? Oh, I don't think I could decide. Glidey was really cool because being able to lift other creepers was a really nifty ability. And I loved Pokey the way he trundles along, it was so cute. But I think if pressed, I'd have to say Bitey. I just, I loved his long tail and he was the most agile for moving through the environment, I think. So Darren, final verdict? I thought the controls were simple but effective, and combining the previous abilities, interesting gameplay. I only wish they'd employed some of the more complex mechanics earlier on in the game. So I'm giving it 6.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. Well, I think it's a wonderful romp through a stunning environment and well-priced given the length. But I agree with you, Darren. It just needed more of that challenge earlier on. That level with the hollowed out tree and the swamp monster remains my favorite because it was just such a break from format. And it would have been cool to have a lot more of that. So I'm giving it seven and a half out of 10 rubber chickens. I wonder what's keeping Barjo. Hoping he hasn't got himself caught in another force field. I've set a few more around the place. Don't be surprised if you get trapped in one just for security purposes, you know.